So what I figured was going to happen eventually has finally happened. And I'm surprised it hasn't happened already. I mean, this new day and age, age we live in with NIL, I'm sure y'all have already heard about the quarterback at UNLV quitting his team, basically. Um, I read a few reports. I don't have all the specific details. But basically what it comes down to, he says he was promised X amount of dollars. He hasn't gotten it. He hasn't gotten it. They haven't delivered on any or part of it. I think part of it. And he's done. He's packed up his stuff and he's quit. Um, they He was a starting quarterback through their first three weeks. And they went 3-0. and They had a bye week in week four. So sometime after the third win you know, leading up to now, um, he was done. He, he has quit the team. Um, he has pretty much, he has told them that, you know, he's not completely, you know, against negotiating with him again to, to possibly come back. But why would you want him? Why would any other team in the country want this guy after quitting the way he did? I mean, it's, you know, the, at the end of the day, this is still college football. And I know, you know, in this whole new thing of NIL that we have now, you know, there's there's real money being made and all that, and but it's gotten ridiculous. And, you know, this isn't going to be the last time something like this happens. You know, the, the more money's involved, you know, the more these agreements are made and broken. And I, I can confidently say that, that I called this, I predicted this, you know, back during the summer, obviously before I started making these videos when NIL, you know, became a thing. And, you know, you start hearing the ins and outs of how it works and what's going to be going on with it. And, um, I, you know, I say, I said to several people that I had conversations with, you know, I don't know how long this is going to last, but it's going to cause more problems really than anything else, you know, and that's just like the quarterback. I think he's at Georgia, uh, Georgia, uh, Jalen Rashada, you know, he leaves Florida, because they didn't come through on an NIL deal. He goes out west somewhere. Um, either they didn't come through on an NIL deal or he just shopped himself out, farmed, farmed himself out, ends up over at Georgia. And now he is a student athlete at Georgia trying to sue the University of Florida and Billy Napier. So... I mean, just ridiculous, and it takes a to me. It takes a lot away from the sport. I mean, it's I've I've said in videos before. This isn't the college football we grew up on, um, but this is not going to be the last time something like this happens. Um, there's going to be several more blowups at you know bigger schools. Not saying that you know UNLV you know doesn't doesn't matter what happens with them. It it obviously does. I'm a fan of all college football, but you know. It, it, this this is not going to be the last time something like this happens. And, you know, they've pretty much already said that NIL can't really be regulated. Um, you know, if I'm mistaken, I think, you know, there was a court case over the summer where it basically said that, you know, the NCAA couldn't touch NIL, you know, couldn't impose rules on it, couldn't, you know, put sanctions on it for things that, you know, were maybe done wrong or whatever. So it is literally a free-for-all. And these 17, 18-year-old football players are just, uh, not all of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are, are out for the money. And eventually this monster is probably going to devour itself because uh, every year that goes by, at a lot of schools that are heavily getting into this NIL thing to get players, whether it be, you know, straight out of college or their transfer portal guys or whatever, you're going to start see, seeing an appreciation for your traditions being pushed aside because, you know, where, when it was, you know, five years ago, 10, 15 years ago, you know, you had these guys, you know, come into Florida state, Tennessee, Alabama, anywhere, name your school. You had these these guys coming to play for you that they probably grew up on that brand. You know, they, since they were a little kid, you know, they wanted to play for the University of Tennessee or they wanted to play for Texas or wherever, Oklahoma, you know, Alabama, LSU, whatever. Well, now you're just bringing in, you know, players because you were the highest bidder. 
You know, they're, they're not going to know anything about your traditions. They're not going to care about your traditions. They're going to want to change things away, you know, from what your traditions are. And hopefully it's not that bad. I mean, I don't mean to, I don't mean to come across all, you know, doom and everything, but, but you're going to start seeing it. You know, we've already, they, they have already seen it down at, down at Florida state, you know, one of their big traditions down there since it was a thing was when the opposing team had it, had the ball on third down, the band played war chant, you know, everybody in the stands is singing along with it. And, you know, it was, it was a big thing. It was kind of what they were known for doing when you played um, down at that stadium. So, and, and they're not doing that anymore, you know, because of the players, you know, now they're playing, you know, club music from what I hear, you know, so it, it's just little things like that, you know, these players that are coming in because, like I say, you, 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 you got lucky and you were the highest bidder. So now you've got these players coming in who don't know anything about your traditions, don't care anything about your traditions, and you're relying on them to do what you're paying them to do. And as soon as they either get a strong perception that you're not going to come through on whatever you promised them, or if you don't come through on whatever promised it, they're gone. You know, maybe, just maybe, you know, they can get more end of, and I hate I'm saying this, but you got to call it the way it is. If this NIL thing is going to stay around, where they have essentially legalized paying players, whatever, contracts, these schools are going to have to have, going to have to have contracts. Now, granted, they're going to have to be able to hold up their, their end, but, you know, you bring in a kid and you're promising them, you know, X amount of dollars for X amount of months, you know, whatever, you know, I, I don't know what kind of agreements that there are in place now, but how many more, I'm, I'm wondering, and I'm really kind of curious, how many more of these situations like, like what just happened at UNLV, how many more of those situations are going to happen just like that or similar enough to it? before the schools, the, the universities, wake up and say, we've got to do something to protect ourselves. Um, whether, you know, the your NIL collective is, is going to, you know, default on a on an agreement or, you know, you know, what's going to happen? Let's just take, you know, Auburn. OK, Auburn. Let's say that Auburn has this big time booster that's fronting a lot of the NIL money and there, I mean, it's cash straight to players X amount a month, you know, whatever. And that's, that's the agreement. Well, they bring three, let's say they bring three players in on an NIL deal for money that they're getting from booster a, well, six months into it, you know, booster a got mad at the president or the athletic director or another booster or whatever, and said, screw it. I'm done. I'm not giving y'all another dollar. You got three players he's on the hook for, for this NIL money, and the players aren't going to see it. What are you going to expect? You know, you know, contractual agreements will pretty much protect everybody. It'll protect the player involved in that from because of just the booster, you know, running off. It'll protect the school from the booster running off and the player wanting to, you know, hit the portal and whatever. But this going back to this kid in, in, in Las Vegas, I mean, the, the guy's a quitter. I would love to know how much other stuff he has quit on in his life. You know, how many other times has he gotten mad and and just taken and literally taken his ball and going home. Now I'm not like specifically dogging this kid necessarily. I'm definitely dogging his kind of person. Um, this is not the first, you, you, I will never buy the fact that this is the first time this kid has ever quit on something. And it is not going to be the last because obviously he has quit on stuff before. He has been allowed to quit on stuff before. And here you are. And he's not thinking ahead. I mean, he's now he's probably going to find somewhere to go. Somewhere there is probably a school university has a, a, a Division One college football program that needs his services bad enough to go. Yeah, we'll take a chance on that guy. We saw what he just did to, to Nevada, to to UNLV. You know, three and zero in the first first three games. 
all of a sudden, you know, they fall fall away on his NIL deal and he walks away from them. So, you know, I, I don't know what kind of team, I really don't know what caliber of team would want to take a chance on somebody like that. And like I said earlier in the video, he's he's come out and said that he's open to the fact of, to, you know, talking to the school again, trying to get something going again, maybe get his NIL deal reinstated and actually, you know, give them the opportunity to, to come come through on it you know and he would come back would you want him back i mean you know what's he going to quit on next time but that's just my rant for that like i said i've kind of been up in the air on whether or not i wanted to do a video talking about nil and when this situation came up i was like yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get this rant out of the way because it's something that's that's been on my mind this is not the last time we're going to see something like this happen. I'm surprised it's the first. I'm surprised. Well, actually, it's not the first. You know, we saw Jalen Rashada leaves Florida, goes out west. I think he went to Arizona um, and then leaves Arizona, ends up at Georgia. You know, it, and this has been said by other commentators on YouTube, you know, pick your platform or whatever. Why did Georgia want him? I mean, yeah, I think obviously the kid's a, a talent or, or Kirby, Kirby Smart wouldn't wouldn't go after him like that but you know what's georgia going to do when georgia becomes the third team on the list this kid walks away from you know how far does he have georgia bent over backwards trying to keep him him happy you know and he's not and he's not even the starter so i I don't know it'll be kind of interesting to see how it all how it all shakes out you know for the school's interest and you know for the players interest obviously I mean, I hope we don't see a whole lot of this kind of thing happen. I, I'm not going to be surprised when we do. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. As long as we live in a world that college football has turned into what it has turned into, you know, this kind of thing is going is going to happen. So like, that's my rant. I appreciate you all taking time to, to listen to me. Uh, whenever you're, I'm making this at night, but whenever you're watching this video, I'm, on, I'm making it tonight, going to upload it tomorrow. Um, I try to get at least one thing uploaded a day to kind of get get some content built up. Um, I appreciate the feedback I've gotten from, you know, both my videos and comments I've left on other video people's videos. So I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the likes. Um, again, you know, share these videos to anyone else you think might would would find them amusing. Like I said, this is some of the best terrible content on YouTube and I'm, I'm having a blast. I really am. So I appreciate y'all taking the time to listen. Um, so I will check in later when something else comes along, we'll get ready for the games. I'm going to try to do a, a Georgia Alabama preview thing. I don't really know what form that's going to take yet, but I'm at least going to try to do something that big. That's, you know, kind of the big marquee game of the weekend. There's, there are other good games happening. I'm really kind of, starting to get interested in this Colorado UCF game uh, Saturday. I, I think that's going to be a better game than a lot of people are giving credit for. But anyway, thanks again for checking out the video. We'll see you next time.